Hi everybody. The purpose of today's screencast is to overview the unit that was created in Canvas for the blended learning um, project for MED 7818. So I choose, chose to do mine on safety in the kitchen. Um, and you'll see in a second, it's broken down into three modules. Um, but first, when the students go into Canvas, they're gonna see the homepage for their course. They'll see that it's about safety and that they should go to the modules area to get themselves started. So if we go over here and click this, this is what the students will see and you can see it's broken down um, into three different modules, kitchen safety, knife safety, um, food safety, and then the last module for just an application, just an overall wrap up. Um, so we'll go back to the top and we'll run down the rubric to make sure that everything that was required for the for the project is included. So the first requirement is the resources folder. Um, we are required to post a file for the final learning plan, the performance scale assessment, the goal diagram, and the visual pathway. And when we go back to the course, you can see that they are all listed here under the module course resources. Um, I did add in a meet your instructor page just so they can get an idea of who their teacher is. Underneath of that, you'll see the personalized learning plan. And I did make all of this available for the students and instructors to see. Going back, um, the performance scale is posted here. It's also posted later as a rubric, but we'll get to that later when we get to the assessments. So this file is there. The goal diagram is here. And I thought this would be good for the students to see because they can kind of see the layout and the goals and expectations of the course. Um, and then finally, the learning path. Again, I thought this was really important for them to get an idea of the flow um, and what their learning choices are going to be um, before they get involved. So the next area on the rubric to discuss is the introductory activities module. And when we come back to the course, you can see that that's right under the course resources, the getting started area. So we'll start with a course overview. When the students click in here, they're going to get an, a brief description of what the course is about. Um, essentially that they're going to be learning about kitchen safety, knife safety, and food safety. Um, and then I, I give a chart that breaks down each of the modules, the expected time frame of how often that would take a, a typical student to complete the, that module, and then a breakdown of the assignments that are due and what it is. So like this is a research area, this one's a discussion area, this is a project, so maybe that's going to take them a little longer. This one down here is a summative assessment. So um, they can use this chart later on when they do their surveys um, to get a better gauge of how they're setting their goals for how long they think it'll take them to complete a module. Um, underneath of that, I give an idea of how they'll be progress monitored um, for understanding and for pacing because they will have a choice in that. Um, so they'll have a beginning of the module survey, which we'll talk about later. Um, essentially, they're going to, at the beginning of each module, um, they'll go to that survey. In fact, let's click it now. Um, they'll go to the survey. It'll ask them what module they're going to begin. Um, they're going to explain if they know what they happen to know about that module already. And then they're going to give their, their goal on what they think, how long it'll take them to do that. So the course overview also explains that they're going to be taking say, surveys every day to kind of reflect on their pacing and their understanding from the day. So just to click on this, you can see um, this is a questionnaire about, which, again, which module they're working on that day, um, just briefly describing what they learned, uh, if they have any questions or things they don't understand. Um, and really, these two will give me a good idea of if they have any misconceptions, if they're on the right track, if we need to back up and re-go over something, or if they're ready to move on. Um, and then they're going to set a goal for the next class period. And then the final area in the course overview is the getting yourself started, just so they know exactly what they need to do, the steps to get going in the course. So they're going to check out the course resources, which were those files. Um, they're going to go to the Getting Started module, which we're at right now, do their class introduction, and then where they can go to ask any questions. So we'll go back over to the rest of the Getting Started. So the other thing that they have in here, which was a requirement, is the community discussion board. So if they click on this, they can go in here and ask any questions. Um, students can offer help. They can ask for help. They can share ideas and resources. 
Um, and then the last thing inside of the getting, the getting Started module is their class introductions. So this will be an assignment where they have to, of course, introduce themselves. And then they're going to discuss um, either their greatest kitchen success or their greatest kitchen disaster. And this will kind of get us started into thinking about experiences that they've had with kitchen safety issues. This will be done through Flipgrid. The next requirement on the rubric to discuss is organization. So for organization, you can see that the unit is broken down into four modules. The first one is kitchen safety, then knife safety, food safety for module three, and then the last is a wrap up, and that's module four. Um, as you go through, you can see that there's consistency in the numbering. Um, so each one starts with module number whatever it is, um, and then it'll have assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, um, and then the same down here, module three, it's a survey. Always starts with a survey, module three, assignment one, module three, assignment two, just creating consistency. Um, I also, for each module, attached a link to the survey that they have to do each day, just so they're not having to look through the course and trying to find out where that even is. Um, so um, as far as the layout of each module and the assignments in them, they fully align um, with the learning goals and progression established in the performance scale. Um, and they consistently progress from lower level skill to higher level skill, um, which also matches the performance scale of going from a 2.0 all the way up to a 3. Um, and then we'll talk about 4.0 in just a second. So if we look at module 3, we start out with something very basic. So this is a research area where they're just collecting information. So this would be a lower level skill. It would also be a 2.0 on the performance assessment. Um, then we get a little bit harder. They're gonna have to look at a scenario. They're gonna have to evaluate where are the hazards, what's going wrong. Um, and then they're gonna have to give an oral or a physical presentation of what they found and what could have been done better. So this would be, again, higher level skills, but it would also be a 3.0 on the performance scale. So each of these assignments and the same up here, right? So it's starting out very easy and then there's something a little bit more difficult. Starting out on that entry level, entry level, a little bit more difficult. Um, and again, matching that learning pathway, um, it follows very directly um, where we're gathering information about what do they know, we're giving them a little taste of something, um, and then they're having to higher order um, present it um, in an oral physical way. Um, for reaching that 4.0, the highest level of skill, that's where they're going to get down into module four. So they really have to master all of the other components um, of 2.0 and 3.0 scores of proficiency before they're able to move on to that 4.0, which in essence is the whole point of a performance assessment. So for the 4.0 proficiency the student in the summative assessment, the students will have to actually go into the kitchens um, and do a safety cooking lab where they will create a dish. They'll choose a dish to make um, and they'll be documenting their ability to perform kitchen safety, knife safety, and food safety tasks, documenting it with picture, explaining what they're doing. And at the end, they'll then evaluate their um, overall performance and safety um, and where they could have improved. The next area of the rubric is multimedia. So going back to one of our first assignments, each module is going to have an exploration or a research component. So if we just click on one of these, it's put I've put several resources in here that are multimedia for them to choose from. So um, essentially, they're looking at different categories of kitchen safety here. They have digital written resources, and they also have in-person um, books, textbooks, and then a serve safe handler. Um, and then down below, they have several videos with both video, visual, and audio um, for them to look at. And each of these research assignments have the same layout. Um, and the students are free to choose whatever resources are going to work best for them. The next part of the rubric is personalization. And this is also where we're going to see a lot of information about flexible learning environments. So we'll talk about both at the same time. So we already said that the students have personal choice in which resources that they're going to use. Um, they would also have a choice to do the assignment digitally or they could do it written by hand. Um, if we go back to our other things um, in the module, um, when they do the kitchen safety discussion or really any of their discussions, they have the choice to either do a written response or to do a video response. Um, when we get down to our presentation, so we'll start with the knife safety presentation. 
um, students have to d either demonstrate or show in, in writing um, their ability to, to follow knife safety protocol. Um, but they do have the choice to present it at, in three different ways. So they can create a video like a cooking show. Then they can create a detailed pamphlet, either digitally on Canva or by hand, or they can do an infographic. Moving down to the next module for food safety, the students have to do a hazardous scenario evaluation. Um, however, they get to choose between a written story, a video, or a picture to evaluate. In that same module, the students will do a food safety presentation um, about the top five um, techniques that they think are most important to follow. And they have six different um, avenues to present their information. So they can again create a video, they can create a comic, they can do a children's book, they can do a voice thread where they create slides and put audio on top of it, an infographic, or they can do their own choice. I gave the ideas of maybe a podcast of who done it or a persuasive written essay. Moving down to that summative assessment where the students are actually going to get into the kitchens and cook, they get to choose between three different recipes based on personal preference and ability level. So easiest, a little bit more difficult, a lot more dangerous because it involves frying. And then if students are not comfortable yet, they can do a goose chase um, scavenger hunt where they're still finding and solving hazards, just not with physically cooking. Students have choice in a more general way throughout the whole course, which is where more of our flexible learning environment comes into play. So students will be able to pick, choose their own pace. They're setting goals at the beginning of each module through the survey, um, and then that's going to be tracked um, through the daily reflection. So the teacher kind of knows what track they're on. Um, students are also going to have a choice in how they work. So are they working alone? Are they working with a partner or in a small group? And that's definitely going to come into play with these projects um, and then definitely coming into play with the uh, cooking lab. Um, students can choose where they want to work in the room. So it's set up with four kitchens along the outside and then six tables on the inside. So students can kind of move around. Sometimes they let them into the back room. They can sit on the floor. They can go to the kitchens and stand. They can sit down with a group um, and there's flexibility there. Um, and then students are also given the choice to, because everything's posted to the LMS, um, a lot of students like to work from home, so the access is here. They can choose to work more heavily in class or they can choose to work where they can focus better at home. The next part of the rubric is collaboration. So students can choose to partner up or they can go in groups, but there's several discussion areas that'll allow for collaboration versus the community share um, component, the flip grid for class introductions. They're going to share their kitchen safety preventions, the top list in a discussion board. And then when they do their food safety presentations, they'll get peer reviewed um, by posting it there. The next component required three formative assessments. At the end of each module, there's a formative assessment that is linked to the grade book. So in module one, they have to do a kitchen safety preventions discussion board where they give their top five um, best practices. And here's the rubric for that. In module two, they do a knife safety presentation that was discussed earlier. And you can see the rubric is linked below here. And in module three, they do a food safety presentation and again, you've seen this, but at the bottom, it is linked to a rubric here. Aside from the bigger formative assessments, each module contains smaller assignments that the students will be assessed on. So their research for each of these will be looked at. Um, there's an assignment on selecting the right knife. So these are much smaller and are going to give the teacher an idea the hazardous scenarios evaluation. These are going to give the teacher an idea of where the student has understanding. The last component is the overall performance scale assessment being attached to the gradebook. So the overall performance scale assessment is posted here um, and inside of it, it breaks down exactly what goals there were expected and how that student would meet a particular proficiency to score a, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. Aside from the goals, each proficiency level also lists the assignments that would have had been successfully mastered in order to meet that proficiency level um, for two or three, and then all the way down to a four where they would have had to have successfully mastered the safety cooking lab. As we scroll down, you can see that this is connected to a rubric, which is directly linked to the gradebook. Um, and it's set up that, so that the teacher can leave feedback for each proficiency level um, and allow them to explain to the student where they showed mastery and where they need to meet improvements um, and which proficiency level they're at. Thank you so much for listening to my screencast. If you have any more questions about my course or the modules, please reach out. Have a great day.